My last video was all about getting this bass here, the Fender American Professional 2 Precision Bass in Miami Blue. And now I've had it exactly one week and I've played it a lot in that time. And I love it and it's amazing. And this is not gonna be though a review about this bass. What I wanna talk about is this right here, which is Sweetwater Sounds 55 Point Inspection. This is the first guitar, I'm just gonna call it a guitar because it's easier. First guitar I bought from Sweetwater. And the reason I wanted to get it from them is because I like Sweetwater a lot, but their 55 point inspection, I thought would be something that could solve a lot of problems in getting a guitar that you know is in great condition, works perfectly, and kind of set up pretty well too. We'll kind of talk about that a little bit versus just getting something that was sent from a factory, sat in a warehouse for a long time, and then makes its way to you, and you kind of never know what condition it's going to be in. So I'm gonna look at what you get with the 55 point inspection from Sweetwater, and I know you might be saying, sweet, what are you waiting for? But before jumping into that, I do wanna just spoil the whole thing and say, yes, it is absolutely worth it. I have no plans to get more guitars or basses, but you know how that goes, so in the future, if I need to get another one, Sweetwater's going to be the place that I go. I would much rather prefer that than not having it. They do their 55 point inspection on any guitar or bass that's over $300, over $299. But for the sake of looking at what you get, I'm going to be hyper critical. So when I bring up a couple of my complaints, just know that I'm being incredibly critical because Sweetwater is very big on promoting their 55 point inspection. They have all kinds of videos, marketing materials, all kinds of stuff that shows how in depth it is, how much care goes into it. So with that in mind, I'm going to be hyper critical of everything. Oh, and I should also mention in the last video, the biggest question I got was, did you get your Sweetwater candy? Cause I didn't mention it. I didn't see it. So I thought it was the first Sweetwater thing I had ordered that didn't come with a bag of candy. Turns out it was just really smashed under all the packing material. So don't worry. All is right in the world and now I can have snacks while making this video. So the first things to point out are these right here. These came from the Fender factory. Now this is a USA made Fender, so it came from their factory in Corona, but all of my other Fenders are from the factory in Mexico and I've gotten these exact same certificates from them as well. So what this means is this one right here shows the four points of inspection from Fender. So you have prep, assembly, tune and test, and then the actual inspector. So that means however many people actually went into making this guitar, these are the four people at different points in the process that signed off on saying it was good. You also get this quality control pass certificate. So after it's done all this and they've signed off of it, somebody else makes sure everything passes their quality control and then it gets shipped out and then it goes to Sweetwater where they do their 55 point inspection. So in theory, a guitar that's already come from the factory with this should be completely fine. It should be basically perfect. And I'll honestly never know in this case if the Sweetwater inspection just was like, hey, yeah, this is great, it's good. Wipe it down, put it in the box, send it out. Or if they had to spend time like fine tuning and adjusting everything, they don't do a specific setup. When you buy a guitar from Sweetwater, I didn't know this, you can ask for them to set it up to your specifications. You can even ask for them to like swap out electronics and stuff. It's not free, you have to pay for that, but they'll do it for you before they send you the guitar. The 55 point inspection just makes sure that it's within the factory specification. But the really important thing is they make sure there are no blemishes and they also make sure all of the electronics and all the components work really well. So this little booklet is the booklet that goes with the guitar down the line in the Sweetwater inspection and everybody who works on it checks off their boxes in here. On the front, there's the first inspector and the final inspector. So looking at this and using my powers of deduction, which I could be wrong, this is almost like handwriting analysis. But if I look at the way that these check boxes are checked, this section here, the handling section, looks very different from these sections, which looks very different from this final section down here. Just the way that the people were making check marks. So what that tells me is I think the handling was one person, the cosmetic inspection, hardware check, electronics testing and playability check were another person because all of these look the same. And then the tune and polish and the packing were yet another person. So the first part here, handling, says that they let it sit for 24 hours to adjust before they even took it out or did anything in their warehouse. They checked the case that it came in, the interior, the exterior, the case was in perfect condition. And then they verified all the contents and the accessories. Not that it comes with a bunch, 
but it makes sure that it comes with everything that it's supposed to. In the next section, cosmetic and construction inspection was inspecting and polishing the body, checking the fingerboard, checking the neck joint, checking the strings, checking any plastic parts, hardware inlays, the nut and the headstock. I have a little bit of a complaint here, probably the smallest complaint of all time. On the fret markers here on the side, the little black dots, I think they're just painted onto the neck. This has a satin finish and then a glossy front. A couple of these, actually four out of the nine of them have like little cracks in them where it looks like the paint is sort of cracking. I don't know if the paint wasn't originally like applied properly in the factory or if the wood has changed and it sort of is like crackling a little bit. It's probably the smallest issue ever, but it's something I noticed. I can't even show it with this camera. So I, I have a photo I took with my phone so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. However, I do have a couple other guitars with the same neck. So this is my Fender 66. This is a Mexican made Fender from the Ensenada factory. The dots that mark the frets are exactly the same and none of these are crackling or showing any kind of distress at all. And the same goes for basically every other guitar I have, regardless of the neck finish or the material for the dots, none of them have that. It's a super small issue and it might be something that doesn't even count. Like it's so small, it doesn't even register on the radar. Being told that everything's going over with a fine tooth comb, I'm being picky that that wasn't mentioned because if you go to Sweetwater's website and you go to their like demo section of guitars where they basically put up listings for instruments that have some kind of blemish or some kind of defect, they're so specific about everything. They take a million pictures of it, they put little stickers on the instrument that point to exactly where the problem is and then they describe it. You know, there's a three eighths inch little indentation on the back that you can see in very specific sunlight. Sometimes stuff that literally doesn't even show up in the photos and they just try to describe it. So it's like really small details that somebody might not even notice. I don't think this qualifies for that, but it is not how it's supposed to be. It doesn't actually bother me. It's not anything I would return the guitar over obviously, but again, being hypercritical, that's something that kind of seems like it made through the cosmetic inspection that maybe it shouldn't have. Hardware check, everything is great. Everything works great. Everything sounds great. Everything feels great. They make sure that the volume and tone pots work really well, that the pickups are working. Basically everything that it's supposed to do, it does. And then a playability check is the last one. So checking tuners, uh, stretching the strings and tuning them, string and saddle position, neck relief, frets, action height, intonation, pickup height, playing and testing all the notes, playing and testing a variety of half and whole step bends and a variety of chords and styles. So not just making sure that everything works, but literally going through every fret, every note on the neck and making sure that it sounds good. There's no dead spots. I love the way that this thing plays. I know this isn't a review of this bass, but the neck is amazing. It's, it's I love this thing a lot. <laughs> the only thing that is probably more down to my technique is I found that it's pretty easy to make the low E string hit the fretboard. I don't know if you can kind of almost like the action's maybe a little too low, but I kind of like it. Sometimes when I'm playing, especially if I'm playing fast with the pick, all the other strings are fine, then I get to the low E and it like sort of does that clackiness. For now, I'm just assuming that's me having poor technique. And at some point in the future, if I feel like, no, my technique is good, but I'm still having that problem, then I'll raise the height of that string a little bit. The other thing, which I'm actually gonna try to take a photo of to show if I can, in this little, thing right here. What this is, is an easy way to adjust the truss rod in the neck. You can just sort of put an Allen key in there and twist it there without having to take off the pick guard, without having to take off the neck or anything like that. You can just do it right there. In there, there's a lot of like, it's like the body is rough. I've never had a guitar that has this, so I don't know if that's normally how it looks inside. From what I know, and from refinishing a guitar myself in the past, the body should be painted and finished and all that before anything else is added to it. So that part should not look funky, I don't think. It is what it is. Again, not something I actually care about, but being super picky. The last section after playability is to tune it up, polish the instrument again so it gets polished twice, and then to repack it, keep it in their climate controlled warehouse until it's double boxed for shipping. I have ordered guitars in the past that just come in like the Fender box. So it's just the cardboard, and then the guitar. This came in a hard case, in a fender box, in an extra shipping package. So it was very well protected during shipping. And this is where my last complaint comes in because it's either at the beginning cosmetic inspection when they polish the body or in the last phase when they polish it, there was not an insignificant amount of polish still on the body. 
which I haven't cleaned it yet. That's why I'm making this video is because I want to be able to like actually clean this now, but I want you to be able to see it as exactly it came out of the package, especially on the back. There was a lot of polish. If you've ever waxed a car, but then not gotten all the wax off all the way and it kind of has like a feel where you can just feel the residue of it or it needs to be wiped off more. There's a lot of that on the back. There's less of it now because I've been playing so much. I think my clothes just wiped it off, but I can actually, I can still feel it right now. There's like a grittiness kind of that just needs to be wiped off. And there was a little bit of that like around the bridge down here and kind of around some of the creases, there was still like residue of polish, which is not a big deal. Like, oh my God, they cleaned the guitar. And even me wiping that off is just going to continue to polish the guitar. So that's not a problem. And there were also a few fingerprints up here on the tuners when I got it, which I'm gonna put fingerprints on the tuners when I tune the guitar, that happens. But if we're talking about attention to detail, especially the last phase polishing and everything before it goes out to a customer, there were definitely like some areas where it felt like there wasn't enough time or attention paid to that. None of those issues cause any actual problems. But the question I have is, is that isolated or is that indicative of how the rest of the process works as well? Think of going to a restaurant and you see like a dead bug on the floor of a restaurant. You might think, well, bugs come inside sometimes and die. So maybe that bug just died right here. But you might also think if there's a bug out here, is like the kitchen in the back just totally full of bugs? Like, is this an isolated, unrelated incident? Or is this an indicator of how things work behind the scenes? I'm just gonna go ahead and assume it was like a long day, somebody had done a million guitars and this was like the last one before they needed to get out the door and they just didn't get all the polish off and it's, it's harmless and it doesn't speak to the rest of the process. But obviously what a customer gets is going to color their opinion and it's probably pretty important to really double check those last things with a fine tooth comb before it goes out to somebody so that I know, wow, this thing is in perfect shape. If they took this much time to get all the little fingerprints, all the little polish off, they must have spent a lot of time taking care of everything else too. So that's me being, again, hypercritical. I still love Sweetwater. I would still recommend the 55 point inspection. If I get new instruments in the future, that's where I'm gonna get them from because even with my little complaints, it's so much better <laughs> than just getting a random thing shipped to you that you never really kind of know what problems it's going to have. I've had the entire spectrum on my other guitars that weren't Sweetwater guitars, where some of them are great and perfect and some of them have like serious issues and you kind of never know because you just cross your fingers and hope for the best. So now that I've made this video, I can actually wipe off all the polish and clean everything up and I can take the plastic off the pit guard. So the last thing I wanna do is I do have a quick tip if you need to remove the plastic from the pick guard of a guitar, because what I used to do here was when there's plastic, I used to just peel it off. And then underneath the screws and underneath the volume things, I would end up with little bits of plastic sticking out because it looks kind of ugly. It gets stuck under these. So here is a trick I have learned for removing plastic from pick guards. You don't need to take the pick guard off, but if you just loosen the screws a few turns, now they're not going to be pinching the plastic down anymore. I can also pop these off. These have a little nut here where the plastic goes around. So sometimes it you don't need to loosen this and sometimes you do. I'm gonna wait and see. And now when I pull up the plastic, it should just easily go around all of the screws unless I screwed up. Yep, see, look at that. So that way there's nothing left under there. Here's the sad part where the USA sticker gets peeled off as well. There we go. Now here, if you don't pull hard, you just kind of let it go gently. I think I should loosen these a little bit. I'm not trying to take anything out or remove anything. I'm just loosening this up to give the plastic space to go around because then it has no problem just slipping around all of these things. Now I did notice this though. Look at this. There's a little mark right here from when somebody was adjusting the truss rod. I don't know if that came from the factory or if that came from Sweetwater, but obviously the truss rod has been adjusted after the guitar was assembled. And I don't know if that's why maybe some of those speckly scratches were in there. Again, don't know if that's a factory thing or a Sweetwater thing. Obviously, like if I were to ever adjust the truss rod on this, I would have done the same thing myself. 
And worst case scenario, a pit guard, which is meant to get scratched up anyway, you could replace those super easily over time. It's a thing that happens. So all in all, Sweetwater was awesome. The experience was awesome. So hopefully this helps you if you're thinking of getting something and you're wondering if the 55 point inspection is worth it or what you actually get with that. So now I can finally remove all that polish and then I can play the bass.